Good morning, everybody. Welcome to The River Online. And we're just so glad you could join us today. And uh, yeah, for this online service, um, it's the last Sunday of June, and here we are without food and fellowship, so that makes me kind of sad, but I am glad uh, that we can definitely be together in this way. So um, I just have a couple announcements for you guys, and I'm gonna talk first about, um, about the online services and, and the summer. So we're gonna continue um, throughout July with, with, this type of, with this type of service. And the reason being is because of the unique nature of the river and the way with that we meet in the community center, we do have to just um, be uh, a bit more um, uh, aware of their guidelines and just being able to work together with Melville Community Works. We're so glad uh, being a part of Melville Community Works. And so, um, yeah, it's just a bit different not having our own facility, but we're okay with that because I have, um, the reason for that is I have a bit of a secret to share with you guys. Maybe you know this, but um, so we're not actually looking at a reopen plan because uh, the fact is that we were never actually closed because a church is not a building. Uh, and, and that's something that, um, that Pastor Tim was preaching on um, as we kind of went into this. And so it's interesting uh, what God's been doing um, throughout this, uh, the, the kind of pandemic and the lockdown that's been going on is that um, if you caught the sermon series that uh, the message that Pastor Tim was preaching the end of March and into April about church being not a building and just how we're um, how our members are in the community and how we're interacting with each other it's just such a great thing to see um, how that's going and so that's the challenge um, for you guys as River members uh, throughout uh, the summer months is to grab someone and um, invite them to church. So invite them over to your house, maybe sit on your deck. The weather is so beautiful and you can um, have church at home and you can invite them and just watch a service and have some fellowship together. So we're excited about being able to do that. Um, also throughout the summer our uh, life groups are meeting so we've got a women's group. We do our hug huddles on Thursdays and that's communicated out. Uh, as well as the men's group are going to be meeting and the Canadian Filipinos for Jesus they continue as well to come together so um, if you're interested in getting uh, connected in any one of those groups just give us a shout reach out and we will get you connected the last thing I want to talk about is uh, the um, offering the online offering we do accept to rivergiver at sastel.net maybe we'll put the uh, email up there as a reminder you can check out our website for a bunch of other information as well there's links to all of our past recorded services there's a children's ministry page there's some information on there about our upcoming vbs that's going to be happening this summer and uh, that's pretty exciting too uh, the way that that's going to be delivered online and uh, it's going to be great because it's such an opportunity to reach out to a whole uh, bunch more kids and families so we're excited about that so yeah thank you for joining us today and uh, be blessed good morning everyone welcome to the river i'm pastor tim yeah so i hope we have uh we're gonna have a great day today and uh yeah, we thank you, James and Cassandra, for just uh, just opening up that way, and it's awesome. Um, so I'm just going to pray quick. Uh, our Heavenly Father, Lord, I just pray, just open up our hearts and open up our minds to what you want us to hear today. And so, Holy Spirit, we just welcome you here. We welcome you into this place, and, and Holy Spirit, just pour yourself out into whoever's listening today. And uh, we thank you that we're able to go online and just reach out in a different way. So we thank you and we just pray that in Jesus' name. Yeah, so these last several weeks we've been talking about fear. And, uh, you know, fear's good. Uh, it's a self-defense mechanism. But the spirit of fear is not good, right? And the, the spirit of fear is not God-given, right? It's enemy-driven. And it can be crippling, maybe causing us to waver lose our focus, uh, maybe even creating scars in our identity as we were talking about last week. You know, in these last several weeks, we've been diving into this series called Aphobos, 
which means fearless, right? And we're choosing faith over fear, right? And so 2 Corinthians 4.18 says, So we fix our eyes not on what is seen, but what is unseen, since what is seen is temporary. But one is, what is unseen is eternal, right? And I believe that right now we're in, a, we're in a place, and we talked a little bit last week about scars. You know, we build um, that scars are from battles that we've had maybe, or internal or soul struggles or those, those things, right? Um, one of the things uh, that, that I do is martial arts training. I teach martial arts, right? And uh, what we do is we build warriors, right? And so, which is really cool. Um, in military training, they have a boot camp, right? And boot camps are generally for new new recruits and to teach them discipline and uh, strict discipline and also to bring them into a place where they work as a unit, right? Uh, sometimes boot camps are a prison for youth, uh, youth offenders and they're run on military type lines, right? So we'll say a boot camp, right? So boot camps are used this way. Or boot camps are just a short, intensive, rigorous course of training, right? So you see that sometimes with the, um, you know, in the, the uh, sports realm, there'll be boot camps where you just do a big workout or whatever. But, but you see, boot camps, it gives you the tools and the equipment to begin your regular training. And this is generally a time where people are made or broken, right? And so they're... Their, their wills are broken or their spirits are broken. Um, there's a word that, that keeps coming back, and I think I used it last week, is a proving ground, right? And a proving ground, right, or where weapons or other military technology is experimented or tested, or even where military tactics are tested before they're actually implemented. And this is really interesting because this is where David was tested uh, for God against Goliath, uh, but they weren't physical weapons of warfare, right? They are spiritual proving ground that made David really ready for the task at hand that God prepared in advance for him to do. And you see, David says, you know, just before he goes into the battle with Goliath, and Saul says to him, he's like, well, what are you coming here with? And he's like, you know what? I've wrestled a bear and I've killed a lion. And those are his, those are his battle tests. Those are his, what he, that was his proving ground. So when he said in, this no Philistine is not going to do anything for me. Right? And, um, and I feel that at this time, like that word proving ground came back, you know, over and over that we're in a, in a time of a proving ground. And that was a word for my life as well, and I believe it's for our church in this time, so that we must be ready, right? And I'm going to give you a couple things today to just really look at, um, just in how to prepare, uh, just in general, and, uh, and even as we navigate through this time, because we do, we choose faith over fear. But So there's, there's a few things. So we're going to talk about weapons, being strong and um, letting go, right? So the first one is Isaiah fifty four seventeen says this, No weapon that is formed against thee shall prosper, and every tongue that rise against thee in judgment thou shalt condemn. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord, and their righteousness is of me, saith the Lord. Right? There is no weapon that the enemy can deploy that is stronger than Christ. Right, And we know that fear right now is one of the weapons of the enemy. That spirit of fear is a weapon of the enemy to, to as we've been diving into this, like to slow us down, to, to change our identities, to um, redirect our path, right? to diminish what God has for us. Right? But you see, just because the weapons against us won't prosper, does that mean that we're defenseless? No, never. But in reality, the weapon that we wield is mightier, right? 
And Hebrews 4.12 says, For the word of God is alive and active, sharper than any two-edged sword. It penetrates even to the dividing soul and spirit, joints and marrow. It judges the thoughts and attitudes of the heart. You see, God's word, it trumps every tactic, every strategy, and every weapon of the enemy. Right? And if you remember when, when Jesus was tempted in the desert and, and the devil said, hey, turn this bread into, st or the stone into bread, right? What did God, what did Jesus use? He used the word, right? God is stronger than fear and God is mightier than fear. And we choose, we should choose to magnify God's word over fear. Right? And don't let fear infiltrate and regulate our minds. Right? Because God is with you and fear has no authority in your life. And we have a choice. Right? We choose to dethrone fear by deploying the Word of God daily. Let His Word stabilize you. Let His Word strengthen you. Let His Word guide your path. Right? His word is life, right? His word is power. John 6, 63, this from the King James, declares, It is the spirit that quickeneth, the flesh profiteth nothing. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life, and his word will crush your fears. And, and church, we need to remember that and we need to live that. His word will crush our fears, right? Right? His word will dethrone your cares, concern, worries, and anxieties. Let his word speak to you. John 6, 63 uh, from the Amplified um, declares, It is the spirit who gives life, which means he's the life giver. The flesh conveys no benefit whatever, so there's no profit in it. The words, which is truth, that I have been speaking to you are in spirit and life. He is the life giver. Proverbs 18.10, this from the King James. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run into it and they are safe. We sing that in, in church, right? I know the righteous run into it and they are safe, right? But do we, do we believe it? Do we live it? Do we just say it? Is it in our hearts? Right? And I think that's what God's speaking to us in the church today is, do you believe my words that I am telling you? Right? Because when we choose to run to Christ, right, and we choose to lean on Christ, and we choose to wholly depend on Christ, and we choose to surrender to his word, it lets fears go. Right? Proverbs 3 Verse 5 and 6 says this, Trust in the Lord with all thy heart, and lean not on your own understanding, and in all ways acknowledge him, and he will direct your paths. Trust in his way. Trust in his word. Do not let fear enslave your heart. Let his word give you life. And, and one of the things just before even, you know, the... Mm -hmm. the, the, the patriarchs, before they moved, what did, what did God encourage them with? He said, be strong, right? He said, be strong. And um, so this is the second, the second part, right? And, and I know I've heard this in my life and God's speaking to me in this. It's, be strong and courageous for I am with you, right? So Joshua 1, 9, it says, Have I not commanded you? Be strong and have good courage. Be not afraid, neither be dismayed. For the Lord thy God is with thee, whithersoever thou goest. And that's from uh, the King James Version. Be not afraid, <laughs> neither be dismayed. Right? God is with you. Right? Be strong and have good courage, because the Lord's going to lead you. Right? And you see, choose to trust in Christ. Right? Church, it is a choice. 
and he will keep you. Choose to place your hope in him and he will protect you. Let the Lord guide you. Right? Psalms 91, 7 says this. It declares, A thousand shall fall at thy side and ten thousand at your right hand, but it shall not come nigh thee. So it should come near you, not near you, right? Choose to believe that the Lord will protect you. Right? And Deuteronomy 28.1, And it shall come to pass, if thou shalt hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe and to do all his commandments, which I command thee to this day, that the Lord thy God will set thee on high above all the nations of the earth. Choose to hearken diligently in the word of God. Choose to submit to his voice. Choose to submit to his promises. Choose to submit to his word. His word is greater than our fears that you face. Fear not, right? Choose not to bow to fear, right? And choose not to magnify the cares of the world, right? And there's a choice. Choose not to entangle your heart in the fears, the worries, and the concerns of this world. And choose to lay your fears, your carries, worries, and concerns at the foot of the cross. Because Jesus cares for you. It's interesting because Don and I, we just watched The Matrix. We went through the whole Matrix series just for, you know, just for kicks. Because, uh, you know, we were bored. And, and, and between the whole Matrix thing, between, you know, the two worlds, it really came to this. is that What divided humanity from the the AI world was a choice and and really it's not much different and, and I thought that just really spoke to me just in that time is we choose right now it's a choice that we have to to where we go right Psalms 23 4 we we know this right and and we 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 hear this a lot and not, like I said before, you know, in some movies or whatever, a horror movie, or they're just about to die, they're, oh, yay, walk through the valley of the shadow of death. I will fear no either evil, for thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff comfort me. But you see, we're in a place, and, and really listen to that again. Yea, I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. Whatever is pressing on me, that can be the shadow of death. I will fear no evil. Because you are with me. Your rod and your staff comfort me. And you see, we're to fear no evil, fear no death, have no fear at all. Fear nothing, right, as you walk through the valley. Because we choose to remember that God is with us and fear is not our portion that we are given. And church, this is a, one of the hard ones, I think. Uh, this next one, right? So letting go, right? And I know probably some of you guys are out there right now when I say let it go that you're hearing that Frozen song, <laughs> right? But listen, letting go of the control you never had. I know if Cassandra is here, she'd probably be thinking that, but it's all good, right? So why is it that we pour our energy into the things that are not in our control and neglect the one thing that is? which is our hearts. You see, God's word never offers us control over our families or our circumstances or our lives or our hours, but he does offer us control over ourselves. You know, we've got to give up the idea of controlling anything else in our lives. Not give it up, kind of, sort of, or just for one day. No, we need to give it up entirely. We need to come to the utter end of ourselves and finally submit to the fact that God is better at being in control than we are. You know, we see this world, right, in this time of COVID. We, how much control did we have? Absolutely none. And we see that God is in control. And that's why we get fearful, because we lose control and we, we forget who's driving the boat. Right? And it's like, oh man, what's going on? Right? You know, Henry just got to remember that God is better at being in control than we are. 
Because if we control it, we often will steer the boat into something else that we don't need, right? Proverbs 3, 5 and 6. This one's from the New International Version. And we hear this. We hear this lot. But do we mean it? Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, submit to him and he will make your path straight. You know, that's when God catches us when we collapse into his arms, right? When we're like, okay, I can't do this anymore and I give you the control. It's not a matter of you just smashing. It's a matter of God just, okay, let go, I got you. And it's not one of those faith fall tests. It's when you surrender and you just, okay, and you drop to your knees. And when you drop to your knees, God is there. Jesus is standing right there with you and he's holding you and he says, okay. Right, he's waiting once more to be our savior. Right, that collapse at the end is when you acknowledge and accept his control over all things. And guess what? It feels so good, right? For the first time, you allow yourself the freedom to admit that your fears are not in your hands. And it's well with your soul. There is a peace. Do you see what happens to your fears when you do that? They're disarmed. They're calmed. They go from causing raising, raging pain to being a single side thought. They get demoted in your life. You see, our fears are not trustworthy and they're not based on truth. They don't know facts and they're guilty of vast exaggeration, right? Our fears do not love us and take no account of our pain or our sorrow. You see, our fears are unworthy of our attention. They do not deserve the deepest parts of us, nor do they deserve our allegiance. Instead, we offer our attentions and our allegiance to God, who is trustworthy, who is truth, and whose promises are real. And we turn to look at our fears, right? And in this process, facing them and sizing them up, we realize how small they are in comparison to the greatness that is ours through Christ. And once we gaze upon our fears with honest indignation, we can see that, yes, God is even bigger than the worst thing we can imagine, and He is in control. Hmm. And since Jesus does not give us as the world gives us, our reaction to fear must not be of this world either. So we we focus not on what is seen, but what is unseen. Right? Jesus told his disciples, not let their hearts be troubled. But how can this be, Jesus? I don't let my heart fear. I don't let my mind worry. I don't let my spirit doubt. They just do. Right? We've given to the lie that our fearful and anxious thoughts are more powerful than we are. We've bought into the falsity that what the world has to give us is more reliable and trustworthy than what God has to give. Our thoughts do not need to rule us because we have a Savior, a holy counselor, and a good Father who wants to do the job of being our most reliable and trustworthy source. Hmm. May you allow God to whisper the sweet words he whispered to me as I studied this verse. No child, you cannot stop fear from coming, but it is your choice whether you're going to let it in. And it, it's a choice. It never felt like a choice. So how is that possible? It's part of being human. Not of God, that our bodies fear the unknown. Right? The painful and the scary things of this world but it's our choice how much dominion we allow fear to have over our lives. It's our choice whether we rule over fear and we let fear rule over us. And just as we went back to that, that part where Joshua is facing the wall, right? The wall there. 
God frequently tells his children in the Bible, do not be afraid. Instead, to be strong and courageous, for the Lord your God will be with you. So what does this look like? What does this mean for our everyday lives, the choices we face? And I believe God gives us examples and glimpses that reveal that. Yes, it's possibly strong and, and courageous in face of our fears. But he uses his word and his people to show us what it looks like when his commands are lived out and believed in. He does this to encourage us and remind us that we're never alone. Do we believe this? Although all the stories in the Bible of all these mighty men that God used, right? Do we believe them? Do we believe the story of David and Goliath or do we just see it as a story? Because the same Jesus that dwelled here dwells within us. We have that same strength. You know, God did speak to many of those patriarchs and mighty men of faith. And that's the same God that tells us, be strong and courageous. Be strong. Be courageous because he tells us this, for I am with you. And that is how David conquered Goliath, the giant, in this way. In his way. Right? That is how Jesus faced the most painful death of the cross through torture and endured the suffering of the cross. He believed the truth of the Father. And in that truth, Jesus was strong and courageous, the strength and courage of a lion and the gentleness and sacrifice as the lamb. So we fix our eyes not what is seen, but what is unseen. And then it's beautiful because Paul gives us this beautiful picture of what a warrior, a spiritual warrior looks like. And he says in Ephesians 6, 10 to 20, right? Finally, be strong in the Lord and his mighty power. Put on the full armor of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. So therefore, put on the full armor of God, so that when the day of evil comes, you may be able to stand your ground, and after you have done everything to stand, stand firm then with the belt of truth buckled around your waist, with the breastplate of righteousness in place, your feet fitted with the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace. In addition to this, take up the shield of faith, which you can extinguish all flaming arrows, arrows of the evil one. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God, and pray in the spirit on all occasions with all kinds of prayers and requests. And with this in mind, be alert and always keep on praying for the Lord's people. And then Paul says, this, pray also for me, for whenever I speak, my words may be given me so that I can fearlessly, affabosely, make it known the mystery of the gospel. And he's not just talking about himself. He's talking about us so we can share the gospel is this time for which I am an ambassador, ambassador and change, excuse me. And I pray that I might declare it fearlessly, affabosely, as I should. So I just want to close in a prayer. And I think it's really important at this time. Um, you know, we talk about the armor of God. And each part, you know, that, that's a whole sermon series itself. It's just the, the armor of God and understanding it. Um, but... What's really nice about it is today I'm going to pray a prayer that we put this armor on because we're in a time where I think some of us get up in the morning and forget to put the armor on. We have to put the armor on every day. And for you today that maybe the armor is you have depression and that means getting out of bed puts the armor on in the morning. 
right? Maybe you have a, a, someone at work that you struggle with. You know, putting the armor on before you go to work helps you, right? And the armor is the Word of God, right? And, and walking in His truth and being able to share His truth with others, right? So just pray with me today, okay? Just as, we, as I close this up, right? Hmm. Dear Heavenly Father, today we put on the full armor of God in our lives against attack. We put on the belt of truth to protect us against lies and deception. We put on the breastplate of righteousness to protect our hearts from the temptations we battle. We put the gospel of peace on our feet so we're ready to take your light wherever you send us this day. We choose to walk in the peace and freedom of your spirit and not be overcome with fear and anxiety. We take up your shield of faith that will extinguish all the darts threatens, that threatens us, that's hurled our way by the enemy. And I believe in your power to protect us, and I choose to trust in you. So we put on the helmet of salvation, which covers our minds and our thoughts, reminding us that we are children of the day, forgiven, set free, saved by the grace of Christ Jesus, and we take up the sword of the Spirit is your very word, the one offensive weapon given to us for battle, which has the power to demolish strongholds, which is alive, active, and sharper than any double-edged sword. We ask for your help in remembering to, pour, to put on our full armor every day. For you give us all that we need to stand firm in this world. Forgive us, God, for the times we've been unprepared, too busy to care, or trying to fight or wrestle in our own strength. Father, we just surrender to you. We lay it all at your feet. We choose faith over fear today. And we thank you that we're never alone. You fight with us. You are constantly at work on our behalf, shielding, protecting, strengthening, and exposing our deeds, the deeds of darkness bringing to light what needs to be known, covering us from the cruel attacks we face, even when we're unaware. We just pray that in the powerful name of Jesus. Amen. May God bless you and keep you and just remind you that you are under the shadow of his wing. Be strong and courageous. Amen.